Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope everybody is doing good and getting geared up for Christmas. I hope that you guys are. I hope that y'all are feeling the spirit and everybody's just doing good. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about a case that happened in Indiana. And this is with a man named Harold. And this is happening all so often. We have talked about cases similar than this a lot lately. And I did not realize how common this was or how much people think that this is the way to go or the avenue to take in life. Or even the fact that people could be doing this more often than we even know and getting away with it like the people in the video that we're going to be talking about today. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a man named Harold Allen Jr. And this is a man, and I listened to an interview with his sister, an older man, he's in his 50s, and we'll get into all of this, that just, you know, worked hard his whole entire life and was married had a stepdaughter, was loving life, loved his wife so much, and had absolutely no idea what his wife, who he loved and did everything for, and his stepdaughter, who he loved and did everything for, would be plotting behind his back. So let's just start at the beginning. Harold Allen, who went by Peanut from like some of his friends, they called him Peanut, was born on September 29th in 1970 in Scottsburg, Indiana, to his parents, Harold Allen Sr. and his mother, Carolyn Allen. He had two brothers, James and Matthew, and in 2022, Harold was 52 years old, living in Freetown, Indiana, with his 52-year-old wife, Marcia Allen, and 29-year-old stepdaughter, Ashley Jones. Now again, Harold had worked hard his whole entire life. He was somebody that everybody enjoyed being around. He was very kind, very loving, a family man. And up until recently, he worked at a place called, I believe it's pronounced Azen USA. And I do think it's a factory. So just a hard working 52 year old man. Now his wife, Marsha worked as a medical assistant at a local medical center and Harold and Marsha got married later in life, but they just seemed to be happy together. They seemed to be perfectly happy on the outside. You know, they had been through experiences before. Obviously Marsha had a daughter with somebody else, but they got together later in life. He accepted Ashley, his 29-year-old stepdaughter, as his own. And they just seemed to really be, you know, growing old together and happy. Anybody that would speak about Harold and Marsha said that they basically spent all of their time together and they really seemed to be in love. However, in November of 2022, Marsha and her daughter Ashley were allegedly putting together a plan to end Harold's life. Why would they do that? Why would Marsha, 52 years old, medical assistant, want to end her husband's life? Well, allegedly when her and her 29 year old daughter got together, they started researching which poison would get the job done. This is what led the mother and daughter to fox glove seeds. Another thing that I had never heard of. If y'all watched the video that I did about the death cap mushrooms that grow wildly in some places, you guys, what in the world? Nevertheless, fox glove seeds are very toxic and they can definitely be fatal once they're ingested. Allegedly, Marsha ordered these fox glove seeds off of Etsy 
and she was putting them in chili that she was feeding her husband. You know, her husband comes home from a long day at work, working at the factory or whatever. Nice bowl of chili, warm bowl of chili. She's allegedly putting these foxglove seeds in them. She allegedly put them in brownies as well. However, unfortunately for Marsha and her daughter, they did not kill him. They only made him violently ill. When the foxglove seeds didn't do the trick, what they were wanting them to do, this is when Marsha and her daughter decided that they needed to rethink their poisoning plan. On December 20th of 2022, the two decided that they were going to use ethylene glycol and they poured some into a root beer float and handed it to Harold for him to drink. So he's coming home from a long day at work. His wife's making him a nice hot bowl of chili. He's not passing away. He's getting sick. Brownies. He thinks his wife, oh, his wife is cooking so good for him. She's even making him a root beer float at this point. This ethylene glycol is colorless, odorless, and it's a sweet tasting compound that they use in products like antifreeze. And the ingestion of this ethylene glycol can very often result in death. At 7.55 a.m., Marsha texted her daughter Ashley and told her to come here. This is when she allegedly told her daughter that Harold was acting drunk and loopy. Five hours later, Marsha called an ambulance stating that her husband Harold was unconscious, but by the time the paramedics arrived, Harold had already passed away. When the paramedics got there and Harold was laying in his front yard dead, initially they didn't think too much of it. And as a matter of fact, Harold's family didn't think anything of it neither. Harold had diabetes and he had other health issues. He was 52 years old. He wasn't eating the best along with having diabetes. I mean, you know, he was eating the chili, the brownies, the root beer float. And so when he passed away, although it was terrible for the family, the police did not expect foul play. They thought it was all just health-related issues. However, nine months later, in September of 2022, everything changed. Marsha called 911 to report an attempted burglary at her home. When the police came there to investigate, they were able to identify two male suspects. The male suspects that they identified's names are Nathaniel Napier and Stephen White. So when the cops went to go get Stephen and Nathaniel and bring them in for questioning related to this burglary at Marsha's house, this is when Nathaniel and Stephen started telling investigators stuff that they just were not prepared for. Stephen told the investigators that he was actually asked to burglarize Marsha's home by her own daughter, Ashley. Now, before we go into any more of this, I want you all to think about this mother and daughter duo, okay? This man has loved his wife, Marsha, who he got with later in life, okay? Accepts her and brings in her grown behind stepdaughter who's now living with him and he's taking care of all of them. Them two get together to concoct this plan of the fox seeds and all of that and then therefore the stuff that's in antifreeze. He passes away. Now the daughter is allegedly having these guys go and rob her own mother who she just may have committed this big crime with. Stephen also told the investigators that Ashley and Marsha were the ones responsible for Harold's death. So Ashley, the daughter, okay, you guys are following me here, concocts this plan with her mom, allegedly goes through with it at this point. It's allegedly, okay? Then Ashley concocts a plan with these two guys. Then when the mom calls the police, they call the two guys in. The two guys are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Ashley wanted us to do this. And as a matter of fact, not only did she want us to do this, but her and her mama poisoned the stepdad. So the investigators went to go question Marsha about it. And she was like, oh my gosh, I would never... I loved my husband. I would never, ever, ever do this. And the police said, can we look through your phone? And she said, absolutely. So she hands her phone over. Little did Marcia know that the police have special equipment. They can track all your deleted text messages, all of that stuff. So she hands over her phone. Now, during this search, this is what ended up revealing multiple incriminating text messages. Court documents would reveal that Marcia's phone had tons of text messages in the beginning of November 2022 between her and her daughter and a lot of them were discussing 
poisoning Harold. Court documents also showed that Marsha was searching things on her phone like what happens if you eat foxglove seeds. She also searched things like how much foxglove is fatal and how long does it take foxglove to kill you. Allegedly, these searches that Marsha made were actually before the text message shows that she texted her daughter wanting to buy these foxglove seeds. They also found text messages from Ashley to her mother Marsha saying that the foxglove seeds are traceable and you can't even touch the plant because they're so poisonous. And that's when her mother replied saying, I know I need to wear gloves and have some time alone to prepare the root. Which just from those text messages alone right there should tell the police or the investigators that they had already been talking about it. Okay, that's first thing. Second thing is Ashley knew that they were traceable, which means not only did they know about these foxglove seeds, but they knew that they were traceable. They knew that they were poisoned. What? I'm trying to figure out what, how do people get to this point? Or is everybody sitting around playing spades or something and you just start bringing up poisonous plants that you can buy that are traceable, not traceable? I mean, how does a person even find out about these types of things? Because this is just a crazy conversation to see in a text message regardless, in my opinion. Nevertheless, then the police found out that Harold had actually went to the hospital in November of 2022, just one month before his death. And when Harold went into the hospital, he was complaining about numbness all on like one side of his face. And this is when the investigators found out that that is a common side effect of fox glove seed toxicity. Now, after Harold went into the hospital, he was seen and treated and eventually released. But three days later, he went back to the hospital with even more symptoms like diarrhea and stomach pains and even vomiting. This is when allegedly Marsha and Ashley placed the order for the ethylene glycol. So they were like, the foxglove seeds aren't doing it. And this is so sad when you think about this man. Again, I know I keep bringing this up, but I'm a married woman, I cook for my husband, I cook for my family, I know what it's like to have a, a husband that works hard all day long, come home and just wanna sit down and pull off his boots and eat a good meal, right? So I, I really am envisioning this man coming home and eating this meal or these meals that he believes that his loving wife prepared for him and he's getting sick and he's going into the hospital and being released and going back in and they just keep allegedly poisoning him, poisoning him more. And because he's not dying, now they're coming up with a plan. Like we got to get something stronger. How evil do you have to be like unfreaking real? Well, it gets even more heartless and evil because on December 19th, court documents show that Ashley texted her mother saying the mail is here, smiley face. So they put the order in, the mail is here. I, I don't get it. You, you got to be living in the house with that man as he's sick and just waiting. And that is when Marsha responded to her daughter saying, he's all in for root beer floats. So she's telling her husband, hey, you want a root beer float? And he's probably like, yeah, sure, that would be great. After the police went through all these text messages and gathered all their probable cause on October 3rd, they went and arrested Ashley Jones, Harold's stepdaughter for murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and consumer product tampering. Now, once she was arrested, this is when the police were able to search Ashley's phone. And this is when they saw that Ashley had been texting Stephen White, the guy that she allegedly hired or told to go and rob her mother after they had done come up with this plan to do what they did to her stepfather. The text messages that Ashley was sending this guy, Stephen, said things like, I planned it all. She also wrote in there that her mother was gonna use insulin in order to kill him because again, he was diabetic and she was gonna do it as insulin poisoning, but that Ashley stopped her mother because I mean, that's that's traceable with the police. And she was saying that like, that's like an old school method and basically saying how stupid her mom was for wanting to poison her stepfather 
insulin poisoning. Ashley's phone also revealed that she was sending text messages saying things about like getting into the dead man's phone, like having to like break into his phone after he was dead and helping her mom get all of his retirement benefits and savings. She also talked about him having like $4,500 just in his PayPal account alone, like from his PayPal credit cards and stuff, which makes me think that Harold probably had a decent amount of money. Ashley also sent a text message that said that she showed her mother how to scam it and pretend to be Harold before they found out that he was dead. And then she called her mom fake AF and said that her mom didn't give her any of the money. So she was basically just text messaging this guy talking crap about her mom, not doing it right, not scamming enough. She also said that she was mad at her mom for not making him go and write out a will right before they killed him, which this, this is truly, not only is this evil, heartless, but the dumbest criminals that I could ever think of at this point. But something else that's Interesting about this situation is a lot of people do not believe that this is Ashley's first time killing. That guy, Steven, that was again hired or plotted to, to burglarize Marsha's home, Steven's father's name is William. He said that his nephew was actually Ashley's husband before he suddenly and unexpectedly passed away under what he considers suspicious circumstances. William is Stephen White's father, one of the men accused of burglarizing Marsha Allen's home. This is Stephen and this is me. He says he's also the uncle of Ashley's late husband, Tyrison Jones. This is all I have of my nephew. William says Tyrison was found dead in his home in 2019 just days after he received an inheritance from his great-grandfather. He says family members were unaware of Tyrison's death until they got a call from Ashley. She had his body cremated, quick, fast, and in a hurry. So before the family could even ask for an autopsy or to have anything done about it. William says Ashley told them he died from alcohol poisoning, but he always felt there was more to the story. Ashley or Marsha had set it up to where they poisoned him within the liquor. And I think that Stephen knows what happened because they were really, really inseparable people. But he says his suspicions fell on deaf ears. Jackson County Sheriff's Department says they're aware of the claims, but can't say whether or not law enforcement is investigating Tyrison's death. So after Ashley was arrested, they go through all these text messages. They find out all of this information and Ashley's not only admitting to everything, but gloating about everything so disgustingly, taking credit for everything like she's this mastermind. Then they get ready to go and arrest Marsha. So they show up at her house on October 16th, ready to search the house and arrest her. This is when they found Marsha dead. It was later discovered that she took her own life. Now, it's an investigation still going on, but they basically saying that they believe that she took her own life. When the police asked Ashley if she poisoned her stepfather, Harold, she allegedly confessed to ordering the poison online, but said that Marsha, her mother, was the one who actually put it into Harold's drink. So in the text messages, it's all her idea and her mom's stupid and all this stuff, but then she still tried to blame it on her mom. These people, this is a mother and daughter, you guys. Now Harold is gone. Marsha's gone and Ashley is being held in the county jail waiting to go to trial. And if Ashley is found guilty, if she's guilty, and I have to say this, you know, legal reasons, you're innocent until proven guilty. Although <laughs> the text messages are pretty darn incriminating. If she's found guilty, I sure hope that she is punished with the full extent of the law. You have to be next level, heartless and evil to not only do something like this, but can but talk about it and plan it and go talking back and forth with your mother. It, it's just that's just crazy. Poor Harold, poor Harold. He loved his wife. He thought that he found the person that he was going to just live out the rest of his days with, work hard, provide love. And this happened. Ugh, terrible. Have y'all heard about this? Sorry, y'all. I just is it's just crazy. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. I love you guys. I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. Lord, get outside. Go take a walk. Go look at some Christmas lights. Something. Love you guys. Y'all have a great weekend, and I'll see y'all next week. Love you guys. Bye.